All right, so it's uh, January. It's time for this month's select series. And uh, first of all, pardon my voice. I've had the flu for the last few days, but um, can't keep a good thing going. So we're still going to go ahead and do this. Um, so I thought this month, you know, normally we'd be uh, making some some different videos. We'd get musicians in and we'd do it. So this month, unfortunately, no music. Uh, it's all just about me talking about these. Um, so I thought, you know, we just maybe recap a little bit on what the Select Series is, what we did last year, and I'll maybe talk through each of these guitars in turn and tell you a little bit about uh, the specific designs. Um, so the Select Series, you know, for those who, who don't know what it is, uh, every month we put together a mini custom uh, series. Uh, it's normally five instruments. This month actually it's been six. And uh, we just find, you know, different details that we use in our custom shop and uh, put them to collectively together to, to make something that's a little bit unique. And uh, so this month, for instance, uh, it's Coco Bolo, um, so that the, uh, the overall sort of feature that, we've, that, we've, uh, that brings it all together is the Coco Bolo. Um, so we did it all last year, um, 12 fantastic months. And uh, actually, just recently, we've been looking back through all the different guitars that we did, and it was collectively they, they just you know look great together. Uh, it's been a great experience for us as well because it's forced us every month to find new things that we can do, different ways to be innovative, uh, you know, new creative ideas, and uh, and I think it's in turn then it's it's probably made its way into a lot of the guitars outside of the the select series. You know, so you guys have been contacting us and saying, we, you know, I like that guitar from the February Select Series or the January Select Series, and uh, you know, I'd like something like that. So it's um, it's been great for us to be able to showcase to you and, and just find new things to, to put out there. Um, so it's been it's been a really great thing, you know. Um, so uh, so this month, as I say, we've got six. Uh, there's only four here. Uh, one of them snapped up already, so I thought there's no use in tempting you with that. Uh, there's another one uh, that's actually with Tony Paul Castro in the States. Uh, he's using it for a review at the moment. So uh, within the next few weeks, you should be seeing a, a video review uh, from him. Now that guitar is still available to purchase. Um, as soon as he's finished with it, it's going to be coming back here. And uh, we box that up and ship it to wherever you happen to be if that's the guitar you're interested in. Uh, just I'll mention it's actually quite similar to this one. Uh, it's an X26 string, but it's listed on the website uh, on EmeraldGuitars.com, so you can find it on there. So, um, so this month we've got our X7, X20, X20 12 string, and one of our, our big Balmer basses, the acoustic bass. So I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of talk you through each guitar. I'll tell you the significance of the design features on it, and uh, I'll probably be able to show you the, the veneers. So, um, so the X7, we've been building these, I guess, uh, for about ten years now, and um, we started doing a lot of travel guitars, and really. The, uh, the great thing with carbon fiber is it's, it's fantastic for travel, you know, temperature, humidity, uh, it can take anything that it throws at it. So we've been doing a lot of these and initially our first travel guitar was our little X5 and then we made this one which is slightly bigger body, uh, slightly nicer neck and uh, so it's a full size guitar. And why do we call it a travel guitar? I probably think of it more as maybe like a, a powder guitar or, you know, it's, it's your couch guitar. So a lot of people buy these uh, thinking it's, they're going to use them when they're off tracking or traveling and inevitably it ends up being the guitar they keep on their sofa just sit and play at home. So it's a, it's a fun guitar to play. Um, this is beautiful Coco Bolo. Um, this one, I think what really makes this piece stand out is just the knots. It's uh, the depth of design. It's, I really love the, the, how black the Coco Bolo gets which blends into the blacks on the edge of the carbon um, and then these beautiful knot eyes so, uh, so that's an exceptionally nice piece um, and then on the back and sides it's matched with a an amber carbon fibre finish 
So, uh, so other things to know about the X7, it's a uh, it's 24 inch field length. Um, it comes with go to 510 tuners. It's uh, got a Graftec nut and saddle, as do all our guitars. Uh, Graftec bridge pins, as all the guitars have on this series. Um, stainless steel fret. And uh, uh, as with all our guitars, they're all made in one piece of carbon fiber. And then the, the Coco Bolo is a very thin veneer that just goes over the top of that carbon fiber. So that's, that's the X7. It also uh, has an LR Bags element system. Uh, which has a uh, volume and tone control very discreetly hidden here in the sound hole. Uh, go on to your end pin jack. So, great guitar acoustically, great guitar plugged in, and uh, just a nice thing to look at. So, for a small guitar, it's still got a really big sound, nice, full, warm sound. Next one is uh, our X20, and uh, the X20, I suppose this is the guitar that, that maybe defines a lot of the features that we've developed over the years, and uh, you know, I think it, it's probably the instrument that I took the longest time to design. Uh, I really agonized over this instrument because it had a lot of new features on it, um, and maybe features that are not all that noticeable. Straight off, I think the first thing that we did with this was uh, how I developed the body. Um, and most of that can be seen on the back because uh, it's a very subtle angle here. Uh, it's got this asymmetrical side. And uh, what that does is basically the, the side is angled, you know, at an angle like this. I don't know, you probably can't see that on the video uh, rather than the normal straight across. But what that allows it to do is it really sits into your knee. It's sort of designed to to sit into your knee on the playing position and uh, you know a video we can't tell it but when you hold it it'll feel just you know it's, it sits snug, feels smaller than it should be. Um, the other thing that we do in a lot of our guitars as well is the arm bevel you know that really helps uh, I'm sure you've experienced it sometimes when you're playing a big dreadnought and you're sitting with your better arm on the edge and you know eventually you can actually get your, your arm slots to go to sleep it can cut off the circulation so that really makes a big difference. Um, we've also got a little bevel in here, which just helps for access up to the upper frets. And um, so it's really it's a very ergonomic guitar. Now the other big thing and big feature on this guitar was it was the first guitar that we designed that had this uh, offset sound hole here that, that straddles both the top and the side. And uh, what that really allows it to do is it projects the sound not just forward but also up at the player. So it's it's a quite a different experience of how you hear the guitar. You know, I'm sure you maybe whenever you've been playing an acoustic guitar you lean over, you know, and you can kind of hear in the sound hole. Well, this kind of does this all the time, so you can really it's like almost having your own monitor on a guitar. Uh, so that's a it's a really cool feature that, that just gives you a different experience of how you hear the guitar. Um, the scale length on this is 25 and a half inches. Uh, again, the stainless steel frets, same features as the X7, the uh, Graftec uh, nuts and saddle and bridge pins, and uh, same with the carbon fiber finish on the back and sides in our vintage amber. Um, this is a, a really nice piece of, uh, of Coco Bowl. You know, one of the nice things in Coco Bolo is you get this beautiful hardwood. So we've book matched this, hardwood running right down the middle. And uh, I really like how we were able to, to get it to run right up just along the side of the, the fretboard. So the neck just comes right down into it. Um, and I think the one really nice thing is, it's, I don't know if it really catches it on the video, but the, the color on the carbon, and how it catches the light is actually very, very similar to the tones in the wood. Um, so it's a, it's just a nice combination. Just give me a second because I think I need to drink some water. The 
the flue is not fun. So that's our X20. And uh, as I say, there's two of those. That one, and then the other one is with, uh, with Tony Paul Castro. Um, then our 12 spring. So, uh, 12 spring, you've got to love a 12 spring. Everybody loves to hear the 12 spring because uh, they sound great, you know, they've got a big sound, but inevitably they end up being impossible to stay in tune and hard to play and with all the tension and top score. You know, everybody's got a story about a horrible 12 string guitar. But uh, that's where carbon fiber excels. You know, I would say carbon fiber builds a great 6 string, but uh, it builds a fantastic 12 string. It's, um, you know, that I guess, the, well, the main thing is the carbon fiber, it's so much stronger than, than, uh, than wood that you can build the top light, so it's light and it's very responsive. But because it doesn't change in temperature and humidity, you know that it's going to stay at this action, you know. So we, we've been able to set the action quite low, uh, so you've got a responsive top, a neck that's going to stay where it's supposed to stay, and uh, an action that's very playable. Uh, it's not super low. I set it up for its, for strumming on this one. Uh, can can go lower if you wanted it to. And in fact, if you wanted to buy it and request that we would set it up with an extra low action or high action, uh, that's one thing that we do for people. We can you know we can tweak the action for you. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, Emerald Twelve Springs have been fantastic. We we build a lot of twelve spring guitars. Um, if you want to get in on the, on the veneer on this one, um, again this is all a dark wood one uh, rather than the hard wood of the last six spring. Um, really nice dark chocolate colours and the warm rich golden browns in there. I really like the two eyes here and just uh, the overall uh, contours of the wood. It really kind of almost matches the fan out pattern of the body. Um, really rich dark color. So this one again it has the element pickup system uh, with the volume and tone control uh, finished with that same color on the back and sides same go to 510 tuners which uh, will give you really stable tuning and, uh, and that's, uh, that's the X2012 I think I actually like that one for myself So um, I think out of all our instruments, this is the one that's been creating the most stir in the last while. And uh, I have to say it was a bit of a challenge for us as well to uh, actually put a cocoa bowl of veneer on this because it's so wide. So this is actually made up of uh, four pieces of cocoa bowls, so double book matched. So book matched on this side, book matched in the center, book matched here. Um, so you've got these lovely big, big uh, eyes here. Um, really, really nice piece of veneer. Really exceptional piece. So, uh, to tell you about the piece, um, well, I guess I'll probably tell you just the background on this. You know, we've been building acoustic basses since, uh, I think it was about maybe 2001 when I made the first one. And uh, they, were, they were good basses, but they really weren't great basses. I think there wasn't such a thing as a great acoustic bass out there. That kind of frustrated me. And uh, I think what the, the downside of acoustic basses is so often they're just not loud enough. You know, they, uh, they sound okay plugged in, they sound okay amplified, but they don't excel in any area. <coughs> Pardon me. But um, but really with the with the baller, I set out to build something that had enough volume acoustically that you could use it in a jam session. You know, it had to be able to compete with one or two other acoustic guitars and really function properly as a bass. Uh, it had to have a tone that was usable, that was rich, and something that you really want to play and what actually really want to take into a recording studio. And uh, also, so it had to have a big body, but I did. 
didn't want to have something that was just a nightmare to hold. Um, so uh, it had to be ergonomic. So that was the criteria I set. And um, starting from the, the standpoint of the body, um, I knew it had to be big. So with carbon fiber, it gives you this great ability to, to sculpt the body. So this is a highly sculpted body. Um, the one thing you'll notice is the, the big deep dish here, which really allows it to, to again sit into your knee. It's got the body scoop here, so it allows you to, to rest tighter into your body here. And, uh, and then we've got this, uh, this deeper colorway, so there's not really any heel on this guitar. It's, uh, the body extends up to the 12th fret, and then with this cutaway right the way down, um, that, uh, that really allows you to get your hand and your thumb right behind and play right up to the 24th fret. So uh, it's also got the arm bevel. So all those things combined, um, you know, if I was sitting with this, you know, really, it doesn't feel huge. Uh, you know, it sits very comfortably, but it is a big body, you know, it's, it's a third bigger than our other guitar, our other acoustic bass, uh, which was a big jumbo body, but, uh, but this is a lot bigger. But um, the result of that big body is a big sound. Now, I don't know what Facebook Live does with that tone, but uh, it's a big tone, you know, even a low B. Um, and that's hard to capture on an acoustic bass on a 34 inch scale. But uh, it's a tight, powerful low B. Uh, the E really kicks. So I'm not a bass player, so I'm not going to get into to trying to play too much on that. But uh, but that's uh, that's what it is. You know, it's um, we've been doing this in a lot of custom versions. Um, you know, so we build this as a fretless and a fretted. Uh, the five string and the four strings, we've got six and seven strings. But um, this is uh, this is just a beautiful presentation and a beautiful example of, of the Valor bass. Um, so if somebody's going to get something really unique. Uh, a couple of other things to tell you about it. It's uh, it's got an LR bags pickup system as well. We've got a volume and tone control here. Um, the strings are actually fed through the body, so there's a, an access plate on the back here. And uh, you remove that and feed the strings through the body. Um, so that gives a really good contact and good transmission of energy right into the bridge. Uh, again, we've got the Graph Tech uh, nuts and saddles, and um, we use the Goto uh, ultralight tuners as well. Um, these are superb tuners, really stable and very lightweight, so that really helps the overall balance. Um, again, stainless steel frets and uh, just a really nice piece. Now, one of the things that we can do for you, just to, to let you hear a comparison, you know, so everybody can ask, well, what does it sound like in comparison to a six string guitar? You know, so it's okay just playing it by itself, but so I think I'll play the two of them and just strum the two of them individually. And I'll give you maybe a little bit of a comparison. Hope you 
enjoyed it. I hope my voice hasn't been too irritating. And uh, if you've got any questions about them, please email Sean. Um, Sean will be able to answer whatever you have. If you probably if you put some messages or questions on the video, we can answer back to that as well. But uh, go to, to our website, emeraldguitars.com, and uh, email Sean at seals at emeraldguitars.com. Um, next month we have something else really nice planned for you, so uh, keep an eye out for that. See you later.